Lesson 6-5. The main focus in this lesson is for you to solve a division problem about packaging eggs and interpret the remainder. And then you're going to share your solution with me and discuss the maximum and minimum number of leftover eggs possible. You're going to solve multi-step problems about distributing oranges into baskets and putting baskets into boxes. You're going to use division and interpret remainder in two different ways. But let's start first with our mental math and fluency. Greater than, less than, or equal to. Five tenths is what to seven tenths? Good, less than. Five and seven are both in the same place value. Tenths, five is less than seven. Twenty-six hundredths or thirty-seven hundredths? Again, less than. If you have 26 out of 100, that'd be like 26 cents. If you have 37 cents out of 100, that is more than 26. And again, 8 tenths versus 7 tenths. You should realize that 8 tenths is greater than 7 tenths. Please turn to Math Journal, page 201. Pause the recording now if you need to until you get onto that page. This page reads, Albert's Egg Emporium sells eggs in cartons of one half dozen. Every morning, Albert collects eggs that his hens lay and packs them into the cartons. He packs as many full cartons as he can. If he has any left over, he eats those eggs for breakfast. One morning... Albert collected 151 eggs. How many cartons did he need for the eggs? Show your work and be sure to include units with your answers. So pause the recording now and please do this problem. Well, hopefully you realized that you could divide 151 divided by 6. So 6 cannot go into 1, so I'm going to put a little 0 there. 6 will go into 15 twice. I multiply back. 2 times 6 is 12. Now I subtract. 15 minus 12 is 3. Now I bring down the 1. My number is 31. 31 divided by 6 is 5. I multiply back. 5 times 6 is 30. And 1. So, how many cartons did he need for the eggs? He's going to need 25 cartons. And this is the units that they're asking you to write. So that's what you should write for number 1. Remember, the one egg left over, he said he was going to eat. So, problem two says, how many eggs did Albert eat for breakfast? Well, remember, he ate the one egg that was left over. Show or explain how you know, and be sure to include units with your answer. That is exactly what we did. We said 150 eggs into 25 cartons with six eggs each. Please write these answers in to finish off Math Journal page 201 and then continue the recording. For these next few problems, you are going to need Math Masters pages 234 and 235. So pause the recording now and go over to the file and get those out. Turn it back on when you're ready to read along silently as I read the problem out loud. It says... The fourth grade chess team is planning a fundraiser. They are going to sell fruit baskets. Oscar is in charge of oranges for the basket. Three students brought oranges. Olivia brought 29 oranges. Ozzy brought 31 oranges. And Olga brought 27 oranges. Each basket must have at least five oranges. Some baskets may have six oranges if there are any extras after each each basket has five oranges. So how many baskets will be needed for the oranges? 
show or explain your answer. Again, pause the recording, see if you can figure this out. If not, turn it back on and listen to what I have to say. Okay, so when figuring out problem one, you need to understand that the baskets for the fundraiser will have different kinds of fruit, but Oscar's team is responsible only for the oranges. Oscar wants to use all of the oranges that his classmates bring, and he needs to make sure every basket has at least five, and at most, six oranges. No basket should have seven or more oranges. And then for problem two, you need to realize that the goal is to figure out the number of boxes needed, which means you need to know the total number of baskets to be delivered. So you need to show your work using labels and units. And then for problem three, I want you to use mathematical language to explain the remainders and how they're used differently in problems one and two. So let's look at this first. How many oranges does Oscar need to put in each basket? That's our first thing. You should realize that at least five, so at least five, but no more than six. So five to six oranges. In each basket. If Oscar uses all the oranges the team brought, can all baskets have exactly five oranges? Well, how many oranges did it say they all brought? Well, in order to figure that out, I'm going to have to add them. So remember, I need to look up here. See, we have 29 and 31 and 27. So as I add them, and you must show this work too, 29 plus 27 plus 31. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 7 is 17. Carry the 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's a total of 87. If there is 87 total, can I divide that by 5 and have it come up evenly to 87? Well, you should know that any multiple of 5 has to end in a 0 or a 5, and this ends in a 7. So 5 does not go into 87 evenly. So what will Oscar do with any leftover oranges? Well, remember, he will use them to make some baskets with 6 oranges. So I want you to look at, show, or explain your thinking, how are you, how many baskets it's going to take to get these 87 oranges into? So I would probably start out maybe by drawing, because that might be simpler for some. I would start drawing groups of five and see, well, there'd be one basket. So maybe I just want to circle them and put one. And then I want to do some more groups of five. So now I'm at 10, so the second group. So maybe you want to write, well, here's 5, and here's 10. So, so far I have 10 out of the 87 used. Pause the recording and finish doing this problem now. Question B asks, how many baskets will have 6 oranges, and how many will have 5 oranges? Well, hopefully from your drawing, you will easily be able to answer that question. Again, how do you know your answer makes sense? You should be comparing the two. Attend to precision. So what are goals for the mathematical practice? One, you need to be able to explain your mathematical thinking clearly and precisely. Two, you need to use an appropriate level of precision for your problem. Three, you need to use clear labels of units and mathematical language. 
And four, you need to think about accuracy and efficiency when you count, measure, and calculate. So look at what the young boy is saying to the girl over here. He's saying the sum of the side lengths is the perimeter, which is exactly right. He's not just saying, oh, I plus. He's saying the sum, so the total, so we know he's adding, of the side lengths, so we know he's counting all sides, is called the perimeter. So we know plusing is perimeter. This is using precise words. Next, you need to turn to Math Journal, page 202. This is a math assessment check-in, so please make sure when you get done with this that you bring it up to me so I can check it off that you knew it. Notice in Math Box 1, it's asking you, 1 and 2 twelfths plus what equals 2 and 3 twelfths? So use a fraction tool if needed to figure out this answer. Please complete Math Box 1 and then turn the recording back on. Math Box 2 is asking you to divide using partial quotients. Pause the recording now and do Math Box 2. Math, math Box 3 is asking you to multiply using whatever method you wish. Math Box 4 is to asking you again to write three equivalent fractions for each. And then 5 is asking you to explain how you solved problem 3. Again, finish Math Journal page 202, then bring it back to me so I can check it off for your math assessment check-in. Pause the recording now and do page 202. The last homework assignment for this is Math Masters, page 236. Please pause the recording and go get that out of the file. Then read this silently to yourself as I read it out loud. It says, Mr. Atkins is organizing the fourth and fifth grade field trip to the Science Museum. He asked his students to help him figure out which students and teachers should go on each bus. The number of students in each class is shown in the table below. So, important information, four buses have been ordered. There is one, two, three, four classes. The maximum number of passengers is 30 per bus. Each bus must have one teacher. Kerry said he solved the problem this way. 115 divided by 4 is 28 with a remainder of 3. What do the numbers in this sentence mean? So you need to tell me, what does the 115 equal? And why did Carrie divide it by 4? And what happens with that remainder of 3? Please write that using precise mathematical words. Finish Math Masters, page 236, by doing the practice at the bottom also. And then bring it back to me so I can check it. Thank you, and you are done with lesson 6-5.